The Beast is a unique 12-cell quad motor RC streamliner built for speed, but testing last year was a complete disaster. What am I going to do to make it a success in 2025? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome. 2024 was a year of highs and lows. I built a speed car from an old drone that, and I still can't believe this, achieved a speed of 129 miles an hour at Ross Round 1. Full of confidence from that and encouragement from Robert, yes mate, I decided to go large and make a full-size drone-based car called The Beast, named after Beast-class drones whose parts I was using. Like a lot of people, I started out with the goal of reaching 200 miles an hour. Could I design and make the car in the three months between Rossa rounds one and three? I did it, at the expense of sleep and nearly my marriage, and without any testing, I made it to round three. But it wasn't meant to be. On day one, I burnt out two motors testing the car. I rewound one of the motors to get the car running again by day three. But then I managed to set all four speed controls on fire before I could take a run. So far, the maximum speed it achieved then was 15 miles per hour, and I was gutted to not even complete a speed run through the traps. But I left the event taking away some important learnings, determined to come back with a car that worked. After that fiasco at round three, I needed to make the car easier to work on and also add mechanical steering to reduce the load on the motors. I went to my favourite CAD solution, Onshape. Onshape is a professional level cloud-based CAD package that is free for hobbyists. One of its key features is that it stores all the history of what you do to your model, which is useful for me right now because I can show you how I progress my steering design by going back in time. Please use the link in the description if you're interested in finding out more. I started with this very simple layout, bolting a crossbeam directly to the chassis with some steering arms attached. I'd move the front wheels inwards by 4mm to give clearance to the body while achieving 8 degrees of steering lock and an 8m turning circle. But things quickly got more complex, starting when I added a fairly essential steering servo. I was looking at making the parts out of some materials I already had, but I didn't think I could make them with the accuracy required in my garage. So I decided to embrace the complexity and order the parts to be CNC machined by PCB way after the good experience I had with the flywheel for my motor dyno. So now complexity was okay. Probably not a good thing for me to find out. The servo mountings could now go directly on the bulkhead, reducing the number of parts. So things were looking nice and simple. But then I decided I wasn't content to do a rigidly bolted front chassis. I wanted to have provision for suspension to help keep the wheels on the ground for traction and reduce the chance of upsetting the aerodynamics and the car taking off. So I added mountings for the carbon leaf springs that I already had. Then I decided to add shocks, working in the pulling direction to add some damping. And then I decided to look at even adding a linkage. See where I'm going with my tendency to add complexity? This is the design I settled on, which actually works with all of these options. The front knuckles have provision for position sensors to run the motor censored. I 3D printed all of these parts a few times along the way to check they fitted and, and worked how I wanted them to. And the first quote came back quite high, so I made it less pretty and saved $50, so that was worth doing. While I waited for the parts to arrive, I redid the rear suspension design. So here there was no new complex parts needed, which saved me some cash. Uh, just a spring stopper that I made from a couple of sections of angle. The battery rails that I had before were now going where I wanted to put my speed controllers, so I put them on a diet with the aid of a jigsaw and a drill, saving 614 grams. Comparing the old with the new designs, personally I'm really surprised with how much I've managed to evolve it while keeping fundamentally the same platform. It does look easy to work on, but the proof of the pudding will be in the assembly. 
After a couple of weeks, the machine parts turned up and looked amazing. Thanks, PCBWay. The quality of your work is stunning and has been excellent value. I've got a discount code in the description below to save $5 off your first order. So check them out. Before starting the build, I treated myself to an organiser box from Hobbycraft and got all my bolts organised. And this was incredibly satisfying and useful. I definitely recommend doing this. I laid out all the parts before I began. It's amazing how few parts there are to my beast car in a way, because the car's got no transmission system. I started by building up the front and rear sub-assemblies, which were both quite straightforward compared to before. The first part was to attach the motors to the knuckles then adding the spring plates to tie it all together. Next, I added the cut-down battery rails to the chassis before attaching the sub-assemblies. But this is where things got a little tricky. One of the threaded holes in the speed control plate had been drilled slightly off, so I struggled for a while to get the screw in before giving up and just leaving it out for now. It's still got two bolts holding on that side, and later on, I could re-drill the plate by flipping it around 180 degrees. But if it wasn't for that offset screw hole, the whole assembly would have been quite easy. And the rear suspension was even easier to assemble because it mounts separately from the speed controller plate. Finally, I fitted the wheels so I had the rolling chassis. With 8 degrees of steering and easy to assemble as planned. So join me next time when I'm going to show how I completely rework the electronics of the Beast car, hopefully increasing its chance of not setting on fire.